Hello and welcome on how to create a um, brushed metal texture or a stainless steel texture like the one you see here. Um, just so you know, this is a pretty basic setup. I just pulled this texture from another project I had and applied it to this sphere here. Um, it's just your basic sphere, just uploaded off the default and I've got, uh, let's get out of edit mode here, I've got two lights and just a plane to reflect it. The plane both lights and the plane are set on the default. Then I have the camera. Um, I'm rendering it on the final preset just so that you guys can kind of see what it looks like. But I have uh, the pixel countdown. So the first thing you need to do to duplicate this texture is with the go into edit mode with the cube selected. Um, I have this right here marked as my seam for my UV map. You can get there by going on this left side here for these tabs. If we bring up the UV image editor here, and then what we'll do is we can select the whole cube. If uh, I've already unwrapped it, as you can see on this side over here, but if we just unwrap that, bam, it's it's over there again. And you can pick whatever line on the on your project you want. You might even, if you want all the lines going a certain way, you might have to draw shapes with the seams here and on your islands rotate them over here to put them where you want them in order to make the texture line up as you'll see in a second. Um, for simplicity's sake I'm gonna get out of or to help you guys see better I'm gonna get out of this uh, screen right here I'm gonna go straight into the node editor I'll show you what I have. It looks intimidating at first but um, these branches are redundant and these are just two different things that let me just clean this up a little bit so you guys can see a little bit better anyway that's not happening so the first thing here that you should notice is I have this texture coordinate and it's coming off of the UV like you can um, and you can kinda reason why that that would be we unwrapped it and so we're gonna be pulling it from there the texture mapping we just have it cranked way up on the y-axis. This stretches the the distortion along one line and everything you see here is the same on the bottom with some minor changes that I'll go over in just a minute. Um, I plug that into a noise texture that's what's gonna draw our lines and then I just change it to a color to black and white. If you have any trouble finding these things you can always shift A to add and then search and so if you want to find that noise texture just type and start typing noise and you'll find it or if you want to find this RGB to black and white you just type RGB to black and white and it'll be right there um, or if you want to get more familiar with the program you can they're all listed in one of these things the next thing is that after we change the color to black and white it goes into a brightness contrast editor which goes then into a color ramp. Um, so this is dimming it a little bit and then bringing out the highlights and low lights. And then what this is doing is it's skewing it so every so that um, the darks are really dark, and then just shortly thereafter everything's going to turn pretty white. And then it goes into this add uh, um, mixer thing right here. Now let's talk about this one. The texture coordinates are the same. It's pulling from the same texture coordinate. Um, the only difference here is this and this are different. As I looked at the textures for um, a real stainless steel object, I noticed that there are a lot of long brush strokes and a lot of shorter brush strokes when it comes to the lines that are in the brush stainless steel. And so because of that, we have uh, this is to represent the shorter ones. These are to represent the longer ones. Um, I plug into these two different things. The numbers here reflect how the shorter, lighter ones work versus the longer, darker ones work. The brightness and contrast on here is a little bit different. As you can see, it's, it's uh, only dimmed a little bit or it's dimmed a little bit less 
and it's contrasted a lot less. The color ramp is different. So it's almost the same as far as colors go since it's just black and white, but the one key difference is that the change is more gradual since the, since the uh, scratches for the shorter lines in the stainless steel aren't as extreme. They ease gradually from the spectrum rather than the deep scratches where it's almost where you see it, it's very dark and then it's very light all of a sudden. So we'll close all this and we'll get back to what matters. This goes into, these add shaders go into a, a glossy, I'm going to turn this off, this is bugging everyone. It goes into a glossy, um, oh and then just I guess another thing is adding these together, I have the factor set at 0.5 which means they're just going to, the same value is going to be added to each one but if you wanted to, you could change that value to the suit your needs. I found that this um, was the best way to go here. The roughness is set to 0.2 because it's, first of all, that's just the default and I didn't bother changing it. And second of all, the scratches don't reflect perfectly. But uh, what's good to know here is the glossy down here, um, Basically, a stainless steel surface, if it was perfectly smooth, would be a mirror. And that's what this does for us, is it's, it's just a sharp white reflecting 100% of the color. It's basically a mirror, and it's going to this mix shader. Instead of putting a factor here, I put this layer weight, and that essentially does what this shader would do, the anastropic shader, where it's going to change the reflections at certain angles and the reason I did it this way is because I didn't find I found that this was a little bit harder to control where doing it this way it was a little bit easier to control and then also it changed um, putting this into the factor changed the uh, the amount this reflected and the amount this reflected at different angles because a mirror is just going to reflect whatever it's facing. It's not going to be anastropic at all where these scratches are. And so we need to use this layer weight instead of the anastropic shader. And then it just goes into the material output. And we'll go back to the 3D view now that you can see all that. And go into the camera. I just have it zoomed in right there. Again, this is a very crude rendering. I'm just going to pause this as I render it and then we'll come back to it in just a second after it's done rendering and you guys can see what it looks like. Alright so here it is finished you can see that you have these lines on it you can change the direction of those lines or the way they swirl in your UV map also you'll notice that my settings are rather low I'm only using 50% compression and so if you zoom in you can see some pixelation but from a distance it looks great and if you were to um, use it for parts it would look pretty much flawless. Anyway if you have any um, ideas for what you'd like in another tutorial leave a comment below or if you have any suggestions for what you'd like um, to see in this tutorial change then let me know. Thanks and please subscribe.